Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to my top 11 tech of 2011 video. And to start off, I just wanted to say that this isn't in any particular order. I just picked 11 different things that I thought would make the list for this year. And to get things started, we have the iPad 2. It was released in March of 2011 and it features a one gigahertz dual core A5 processor. It has 512 megabytes of RAM and it comes in three different capacities, 16 gigabytes, 32 gigabytes, and 64 gigabytes. Now this was a pretty big revision over the first iPad. Considering it's faster, it offers two cameras, and Apple introduced a smart cover, which was a new way to actually lock your device and unlock it, while also somewhat protecting the screen and keeping it free of debris. So the iPad 2 definitely made the list, and it was one of the most anticipated products in 2011. Next up, we have the iPhone 4S. It features the same dual-core A5 processor that's in the iPad 2. It has 512 megabytes of RAM. It has an upgraded camera, and it comes in the same three capacities as the iPad 2. 16 gigabytes, 32 gigabytes, and 64 gigabytes. So the iPhone clearly made the list this year, especially with the new edition of Siri. And I'm sure that most of you know Siri is Apple's relatively new personal assistant that can do things from actually creating contacts, searching the web, and looking up odd facts in Wolfram Alpha. And this year's iteration of the iPhone is actually pre-ordered more than ever before, so it's clear that the iPhone 4S made the list this year. Next up, we have iOS 5, which brought a multitude of different things to the iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch, some of which would be Notification Center, iMessage, Newsstand, Reminders, Twitter integration, multiple additions and upgrades to the camera application, the ability to actually edit photos inside of the photo app, Wi-Fi sync, AirPlay mirroring, and various upgrades to Safari. So it's clear that iOS 5 is probably one of the better updates to iOS that we've seen in a long time. Next up we have iCloud, which was introduced alongside iOS 5, and it allows users to store and sync pictures, notes, and application data across devices, as well as create daily backups for iDevices and restore to them. And it's one of the things that actually brought the ability to be PC free to mobile iOS based devices. Next we have the Kindle Fire, which which is Amazon's relatively new seven inch $199 tablet that's priced to compete with Apple's iPad in hopes of people actually choosing the cheaper tablet over the iPad because it is a difference of about $300 between the Amazon Kindle Fire and the cheapest version of Apple's iPad. Now the Kindle Fire comes equipped with 512 megabytes of RAM, a one gigahertz dual core processor. It runs a customized version of Android 2.3 and it also comes with eight gigabytes of built-in flash memory and it's capable of storing almost all forms of data in Amazon's cloud storage service. And next I'm gonna cover the two mobile gaming devices. First up we have the Nintendo 3DS and it was a redesigned version of the Nintendo DS and it's actually capable of playing 3D games. Other than that there's nothing that's really that special from the latest version of the Nintendo DS to the 3DS. Now we have the PS Vita. It was actually released in Japan on the 17th of December in 2011 and it's set to be released inside the United States on February 22nd. So even though it really isn't out inside of the United States, US users can actually still get it by purchasing a Japanese version. And that's basically why the PS Vita made this list and why it isn't really pushed into the 2012 list. So the PS Vita is Sony's next generation portable gaming device and it features a five inch OLED multi-touch capacitive screen and it has a back touchpad with dual joysticks, two cameras, 512 megabytes of RAM, 128 megabytes of video RAM, and a quad core processor. So this thing is just a beast and it comes jam packed with practically the latest mobile technology and it is absolutely amazing. I've gotta say, I did get my hands on one early and it's totally awesome and in my opinion, it blows the Nintendo 3DS away due to its superior hardware and the fact that it will have more serious games than the 3DS, at least in my opinion. Moving on, we have the Galaxy Nexus, which is actually the first Android phone to run Android 4.0. And it also features facial recognition unlock. And supposedly it works extremely well. And again, it is capable of unlocking that actual device itself without putting in a password. All you have to do is simply hit the lock button and you have to hold it up so it can see your face. And once it recognizes you, it will unlock your device. 
And it's also one of the few phones to feature Beam near field communication. And for those of you that don't know, that's actually a relatively new addition to Android. And basically the two users with Android phones that have near field communication or NFC would hold them up to each other and they could transfer content between one another. So let's say you're watching a video and you wanna beam it to your friend. You can do that simply by holding it next to their phone and then they can watch the same exact YouTube video on their device. Next up we have the Tesla Model S and it's actually a car, but it's the pinnacle of car technology. So it's practically the only fully electric sports car and the highest base model is capable of going zero to 60 miles per hour in just 5.6 seconds. And the signature performance edition is capable of going from zero to 60 in 4.4 seconds. So that is absolutely astounding for a fully electric car. Like I said, it's basically the only fully electric sports car and it comes equipped with a 17 inch touchscreen for the center console that can do basically everything from controlling the headlights to the sunroof. And when the car is actually out, they plan on releasing an iPhone application and I'm assuming an application for Android as well that will allow users to track their car wherever it is so you can always remember where you parked and actually change the climate in inside of the car before you get to it. So it's set to the temperature you want before you start driving. And finally, we have the Lytro camera, which is a super small, odd looking camera that offers a new type of technology that allows you to actually take pictures and refocus them at a later point in time. And they're actually calling them living pictures because you can change the focus of them anytime you want. So that's it for this video. And I hope I did cover most of the great things that were released into the tech world in 2011. And I'm sure I didn't cover everything, but I tried to do my best to get some of the most desirable things in this year's list. Again, I hope you guys like this video. Please remember to rate it up. And if you have any comments, leave them down below in the comment section. Also, be sure to subscribe if you aren't already. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.